New worms and more in your weekly cybersecurity roundup. I'm Ali Diamond, and this is ThreatWire. The internet is not doing well right now. Every major provider used to basically keep the internet running has gone down, this time with Cloudflare. On November 18th, 2025, Cloudflare went down. Cloudflare had issues for around six hours, with most being resolved within three. In a statement on Twitter, the CTO explained the issue was being investigated and assured the world that this time it was not a DNS issue. There was a bug in the service used for bot migration that crashed after configuration change occurred, which cascaded into issues for many Cloudflare services as a whole. In their formal write-up, Cloudflare explains, the issue was not caused directly or indirectly by a cyber attack or malicious activity of any kind. Instead, it was triggered by a change to one of our database systems permissions, which caused the database to output multiple entries into a feature file used by our bot management system. That feature file in turn doubled in size. The larger than expected feature file was then propagated to all the machines that make up our network. The bot management system is a system that grades incoming requests to Cloudflare's network, generating a bot score, allowing Cloudflare users to control bot access to their sites. The management system uses a configuration file that is updated at a high frequency basis to dynamically react to bots and incoming bot attacks. A change in the file generation caused a duplication error in the configurations which led to the larger errors. At the same time, the Cloudflare status page also went down, leading many to believe it was a cyber attack. Even Cloudflare thought it was a cyber attack since the page has no Cloudflare dependencies. It turns out that it was just a coincidence of timing. This outage has been noted to be the worst outage Cloudflare has experienced since 2019. Honestly, it just feels like the internet is broken in general. Search isn't working right, major infrastructure providers keep having outages, websites are allowing mildly functional work to be put into production. What is going on? It can't just be because of AI. There must be something more to this. And I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comments. NPM is being hit with another series of critical software supply chain attacks by the same group who infiltrated NPM packages just a few months earlier. Now, NPM packages of major respected companies are being infiltrated by the same shy halud worm, but this time it's more advanced. The group behind the attacks, named Singularity, has been testing their work since August. Their first test happened in August when they exploited a GitHub action to inject a vulnerability into the NX packages for NPM to steal publishing tokens. This first attack did not introduce the worm. In September though, the first ever worm was introduced into the NPM ecosystem. This worm named Shai Halud infiltrated 150 plus packages. They're taking the learnings from their last attack and made the worm even more efficient. The team at Aikido Security caught the attack early November 24th and published their findings. The new version of the Shai Halud worm was first detected in the repo of the Async API CLI project on a newly created branch. The worm then began propagating from over 36 NPM packages maintained by the Async API team and out into the NPM ecosystem. To make the worm more efficient this time around, the worm utilized the bun runtime, which hid the code for it to run in a file named bun underscore environment.js. The worm was programmed to infect 100 packages at a time instead of 20, and if it couldn't authenticate against NPM or GitHub, it wiped all the files in the user's home directory. This time, better obfuscation was used as the repos created to publish secrets were randomly named instead of hard-coded. The worm still published secrets to GitHub, but now the repos had the same description to be easily searched. At the time of publishing their write-up, Aikido Security found over 26,000 repos on GitHub matching the search pattern. It's reached over 500 packages now, having a total of over 132 million monthly downloads. Packages from major groups were hit, including Zapier, ENS Domains, Postman, Posthog, VoiceFlow, and more. 
Investigations are still actively happening around the potential entry point and the GitHub workflow vulnerabilities used for entry. As a reminder, putting source code, keys, and company PII into any online tool that is not sanctioned by your employer is considered improperly sharing company information or a data leak. The team at Watchtower did a bit of digging and found out just how bad it has gotten. The team explored two very popular code formatting websites, jasonformatter.org and codebeautify.org. Outside of the normal prettying of input, they also offer the ability to save formatted input so you can share it with those who need to see it. The pages are not private though, and are easily accessible through the publicly available, recently saved pages that each of these sites provide. In addition, the URLs to these saved links are quite repeatable and searchable. The team at Watchtower captured over 80,000 submissions consisting of five years of saved pages from JSON Formatter and one year of saved pages from Code Beautify. Their findings included secrets like database credentials, CICD pipeline credentials, all kinds of PII, authentication repo keys, and more. Basically, everything was there. Information was coming from governments all the way to MSSPs and banks. There was not an industry that was left untouched. The team at Watchtower did attempt to reach out to the high profile organizations they did find values for. However, many did not respond to their disclosures. I am curious, given the volume of secrets and sensitive information they must have, how would you respond? Do you think that this is a much bigger risk than the companies are treating it to be? For watching Threatwire for the week of November 24th, 2025. If you enjoyed this show, please head over to patreon.com slash threatwire. Happy Thanksgiving to those who are in the USA. As we come to the end of the year, I thought it might be fun to do a year in review of the community's top 10 favorite security stories or incidents this year. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I will try and spin up a way to allow y'all to vote so that we can make this super interactive. If you want to find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending with Allie. And just a little announcement. I do have a full-time job now. I signed a job offer in November, but as a reminder, this does not mean that I am still not doing ThreatWire. ThreatWire is something I do on the side outside of my full-time software development role. So thank you so much for watching. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.